Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Cancer. If Cancer is your solar lunar ascendant slash rising sign, this is a message for you. We're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. Let's see what we have. So I used a different kind of tea today. And it's the leaves look like they've unfurled a little bit more than they usually do. And it's kind of interesting. Usually I use the, um, it's like the Chinese black tea. And what is it called? Empire? Oh, I can't think what it's called exactly from the tea shop. I get it, but... Um, they don't, when they steep, they don't open up like these ones as much. So it's a little bit different. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to see if I can just move this light a little bit. Get a better picture there. Okay. So, the first thing that I am seeing is this duck here and it looks like it's in flight it is headed towards the left which usually indicates something from um a pat from the past okay and i'm wondering it makes me wonder right off the bat <laughs> <laughs> right, we haven't really gotten into anything yet, but it makes me wonder if um, it feels like somebody from your past kind of coming up. I feel like um, these birds, especially migratory birds, um, which a lot of them do migrate, but uh, ones that we are we see commonly, geese, ducks, those kind of things. Um, it makes me wonder if recently there's been some kind of large transition in your life. And then um, if, if in this transition that you have already transitioned into, and now this, and let me give you some examples, um, changing jobs, moving, um, getting married, uh, you know, leaving school, graduating, stuff like that kind of really rites of passage in your life. Um, I immediately, though, I'm getting this impression that somebody from your past has been on your mind, okay? And um, I feel like this is kind of a person that was important maybe when you were younger and that whenever something big happens, you kind of like, they come up in your mind, I think that you had a pretty strong connection with this person. Um, I kind of almost think that this is like a young love kind of situation, maybe um, in like your formative years and somebody that's kind of in, you know, because it happened before you were like an adult adult and you, you know, you kind of have like a little more freedom to just, indulge in a relationship without all the constraints of being an adult it almost seems like kind of like these idealized um you know aspects of the relationship really have stuck with you and um so whenever there's any kind of like something difficult going on you kind of really um immerse yourself in these memories of this old love. And I think that that person has been very present in your mind lately. Um, although I don't think that you are currently, you don't, it doesn't seem like you talk to the person. I don't see them. I get the feeling that they're just not, um, I don't see them like in your current life. Okay, let's see. I feel like it seems like you've been having some bad dreams lately. Uh, let's see if we can get this in focus. I feel like there's some bad dreams going on. This is going to be on the realm of the unconscious, spiritual, uh, metaphysical, uh, 
guardian angel, that kind of thing. And here's my cat <laughs> saying hello, TT. Hi, TT. Um, and I see a flying being kind of stooped over somebody who is in a crouched position or kind of laying down in it. And this kind of, um, this kind of formation, these kinds of, uh, especially the winged being, um, makes me think of an incubus or a succubus and the old hag syndrome. So I have a feeling that you've been having some intense dreams. They haven't been pleasant really. And I think that really is tied to this transition. I feel like you're feeling a little unsettled about maybe, um, just going into this new situation. I think that's not abnormal if you have a cancer position in any of your main three um, placements there. Uh, I think that probably, you know, this is something that really has, you know, changed the... Um, change the configuration of your daily life, your routine. Um, and I think that, you know, with that, you've had some bad dreams. Okay. Um, and you know, I think that will lessen. I think that once you get comfortable in your new, um, situation, I think that, uh, that's going, not going to be as, um, potent. But what I will say is while you're going through this period of the dreams to help gain some control over the feelings that you're having. And I think you are waking up and it's following you into your waking life. I think on the day side, um, there's lingering, uh, lingering feelings, impressions, symbols, um, maybe even some, a little bit of paranoia or anxiety that something bad is going to happen. And I think for you to kind of take, uh, ownership and, res and not responsibility, ownership and power over these, um, these dreams and things that are happening in that dream world and falling you over into your waking life, um, is to get like a little journal or a piece of paper or whatever and kind of write down um, details and scenari the scenarios that are happening in your dreams. Just write it down, um, keep an archive of it. Uh, you don't have to go back and read it or anything like that, but just in um, the process of articulating those things, you will gain power over them, okay? And that will help that'll help you transition out of this period of, uh, nightmares and probably maybe even dream terrors or anything like that. Okay. And let's see. Here I see this is interesting. It's really pretty. I hope that you can see it in the way that I do. It looks like a little fairy. And that's what I love about this tea mix because it has little flowers and like the other, I don't know what all the stuff is, but it makes some really pretty pictures. It looks like, like a little tiny fairy person, um, playing a saxophone. <laughs> um, and that image is just so pretty. I feel like yeah, I feel like um, there's there's like an undercurrent in your life right now, and my cat is really <laughs> she's she's agreeing with me. She's uh, rubbing the edge of the bowl to let you know she agrees. Um, but I think there's this undercurrent in your life that is really trying to speak to you um, and let you know that. Um, you know, on the micro level of things, um, you're focused on all this big stuff right now, but like on the small level, the pre and the present level on the level that is most tangible to you, there are a lot of things right now to be celebrating. I think that things that are really coming together, um, it feels strange and unknown to you so that you know that causes anybody anxiety but I think in particular 
Um, water signs, you guys just have that anxiety and moodiness and, you know, just really um, close up tight when, when you f start to feel a little bit threatened by the, these changes and stuff. But I think that if you just kind of stop and let yourself out of that, you're going to see that there's a lot of beauty going on. Things are really aligning in these like just gorgeous ways. Um, I think there's like just a lot of the universe is always talking to you, but really it has a lot of beautiful little signs and symbols that it's really trying to show you right now. I think that even in those dreams that are really unsettling, there are a lot of fragments that um, would be so useful to you. And I think in doing some of that dream dream journaling and just writing down like the, the, the really key impressions that you're having, if you don't already do that, I think it will help you remember some of the stuff that's really going to get you through how you're feeling. I think that you're going to see some um, ongoing uh, themes that uh, are really powerful and beautiful for you right now. Um, I see just kind of a wild horse running, running in a field and um, I just, I think that there's just such spirit ready to just break free in you right now. Um, I think, I see quite a few birds sitting and kind of singing. And this one's interesting. This one makes me think of somebody in like a kimono. It makes me think of almost, I guess in my mind it's got like a, just like a, um, I get the impression here. Okay. So I get the impression that another thing that is going to help you, that's going to help bring you. And let me see if I can change this light a little bit. I want to see if I can, it's a little brighter. Okay. I think that something that really is going to help you. And I think that in general, um, cancer to you know a lot of people most of the cancers i've ever known thrive on um order you know understanding like their how things are going to play out the routines um having few surprises and you know just having a sense of control over what is going on with them and around them so i think that if you um, as well as doing the stream journaling, I think that if you partake in some ritualized, um, ceremonial, um, anything kind of, you know, just, uh, that has processes that you enjoy partaking in, um, I think that's really going to help you too. I think that it's really going to, um, bring that that feeling of having like a, a direct control over something. It's predictable. Um, it's fulfilling. There's something very satisfying about going through the every step of a ritual and completion. Okay. So whatever that is, if that is like a tea ceremony, if that is some kind of divination, if that is you know, like a self care ritual, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Okay. You can ritualize anything really. Um, if you, I think if you just kind of throw yourself into that, that's really going to help you with these feelings of, you know, um, kind of just being off balance from this change that has gone on recently. So, um, let's see. I see a big E. So I see, I, well, I think there's something in your life that has, <laughs> it seems rather large. Um, is that a person's name? Is that, um, somebody who is in your life, they have some kind of career that starts with an E or, you know, a passion or hobby or, um, a descriptive word. Okay. And also I'm just thinking, um, 
I'm thinking it's somebody that's like very kind of has a lot of energy. They're energetic. Um, and I think that you're really drawn to that. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what the E is. Now, when I turn it this way, it looks like a puppy or a dog. So I'm thinking that this person's also somebody who you perceive to be very loyal and a good friend or companion or a coworker or whatever. Okay, and I think just in those interactions you have with that person, I think that it will help you um, feel more grounded and more, you know, I think that you uh, really, um, I think that you really take on the energies of other people around you. So when you come in contact with somebody who has like a really big energy to them or they're an energetic person, I think that really helps you kind of like, you know, get into that like higher gear. And that's not, I don't think a bad thing right now for you. Um, I don't feel like you're really feeling like super depleted. I think it's just kind of, um, it's just this change has been a lot for you, I believe. Now, here's an interesting one because it almost looks like a person holding like a lantern. And I think that, you know, that hermit energy is just really natural to, a. Uh, to a cancer person. I think just in the deepest, your deepest nature, you very much are like a very um, solitary kind of, solitary kind of person. But I think that, um, you know, I think that you also have, it feels like because you've had this stuff going on, it's like, it's put you out of your comfort zone, but I think you've also had to interact with a lot more people. And so that makes me kind of wonder if like you've moved or changed jobs or something and you've had to have all these new um, lines of communication and really like longer conversations than you'd like. And um, it's just been kind of overwhelming for you. Okay, and I think... I think it's just like, so it's just like an onslaught of it. That's kind of the feeling I have, but like, I don't think you're like super depleted. I think it's just like anxiety. It feels like a lot of anxiety going on. And then let's see, what about, I see a dragon here and that's on the reverse side of the um, hermit. So I wonder if, <laughs> I wonder if you've had a bit of um, a little blow up recently. Not a big thing. I don't think that you are a superly over aggressive person at all. Um, but I think you had a flare of anger. And I think that maybe you just kind of snapped off on somebody. And it's probably somebody in your personal life. I almost wonder if it's a family member, but um, it feels like you might need to apologize. I think that's adding to this feeling of guilt a little bit. Um, you know, I think the release of some of that energy was okay, but like, I think that you feel a deep need to apologize and I think you should go ahead and do that. It's going to feel better once you do. I don't think you're like really the type of person that just like, um, you know, goes off and then you never... <laughs> never say anything about it. Um, I think that you're carrying some stress with you because you feel bad and feel guilty for maybe something you said. Um, and I think, you know, just a simple sorry and explaining how you've been feeling. You know, you don't have to go super into it. I think they already know, but definitely say sorry. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of just I think I'm going to look at the saucer now because I think I went over most of the stuff on there. Okay, let's see. Let's 
So this is interesting. It feels like there's been a shift in um, what I would call your like personal temple. I feel like there's a sense of reformulating your temple, your foundational place. Um, that could be physical. It could be a physical space. It, but it seems almost more like it's an interior, interior dwelling for you. I think in this shifting, there's just. I think, I, I feel like there's been a larger shift. In your life I think you're going into a different part of your life that's been going on for a while I think that this okay and if that skips a little it's because I had to restart my camera okay um, I think that this current shift though is uh, sm a smaller thing like we said talked about maybe a move um, a change of career or a job or you know, some kind of life change like that. And um, so anyways, I think that it these two things are tied together. There's been like a change in just kind of how you feel about life. I think that probably it's the passage of time and coming into a new age, um, age bracket probably. And so it recently, you know, you've decided to change this thing in your life. That's a big thing, but it's not like, you know, the biggest thing in life. So I think that, um, that has also kind of been a cat, a, a minor part of a catalyst to, um, change your kind of interior space, your sacred space. I think that, uh, you know, you're looking for, it seems like you're looking for kind of just a new alignment. Maybe um, there's a sense of needing to search out newer understandings for yourself. Things have shifted. You've gotten older um, and, you know, your priorities have really changed. So I think that along with this dream journaling um, and, you know, finding some kind of ritual to help yourself kind of be present and in something that is within your power to control something that you understand and can predict. I think it would be interesting, um, as a, you know, an experiment as something to a project or something to try is maybe even drawing out a physical representation of your interior temple. If you've never done that, it might be an interesting thing to try to kind of just visualize what would a sacred space look like for you. Okay. And if you have done work like that, um, maybe it would be interesting to update that. Okay. And, um, you know, I think that, I think that it just in general cancer, I feel like things are really together for you and going the way that you want them. I think it's just this, the sense of change that has you a little bit distressed, but, um, you know, I think that <laughs> you're a person that can get through just about anything and you will. And I think that you know that you will. And so this, this period of time won't last forever. And I think that you're really going to start enjoying, um, all of the hard work that you have done and, um, you know, just really setting up your life in a way that, um, makes sense to you and that you can enjoy. Okay. Well, I think that's our message for today. And, um, I thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please like subscribe, leave a comment. I appreciate all of the different ways that you engage with me. It helps me get in the algorithm and um, hopefully get a couple more subscribers. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Ula Tea Leaf Readings. You can find me on Instagram, Ula of the Tea. And um, if you're interested in a private reading, um, my email is in the description. You can get a hold of me and we'll set that up. 
Uh, I'm always so honored to be able to bring these messages to you. I thank you for sharing your time with me today. And, um, you know, I'd love to hear how things are going. So just leave a comment and let me know. And yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Cancer. <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this. Thanks so much.